Welcome to Ink Thinks, and welcome to part one of the Ink Thinks Halloween special where we talk about Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. One of the most controversial games of all time is easily Mortal Kombat. Between the vicious violence, gratuitous gore, and brief appearance at the United States Congress, Mortal Kombat has not only found itself under public scrutiny time after time, but has also helped directly lead to the Entertainment Software Rating Board, or ESRB. That's right, every time you see a game rated E, T, or M, that's thanks in a very large part to Mortal Kombat. Well, and also to a game called Night Trap that was also hilariously played in the US Congress. From the beginning, one of the things that Mortal Kombat did to differentiate itself from other fighting games was to have the highest level of gore and violence that a video game has ever seen in the form of fatalities. Whether you're burning someone alive, ripping their spine out, or throwing them into the infamous pit, Mortal Kombat has never shied away from finding ways to completely eviscerate your opponent. So in honor of Halloween, we're going to talk about the chances of Scorpion from Mortal Kombat fighting Pichu, Isabel, and Kirby in Super Smash Bros. Today I'm going to break down every single argument that I could find online for and against Scorpion in Smash. Let's get into it. The year was 1992 and a man named Ed Boon and his friend John Tobias wanted to put out a video game starring John claude Van Damme, who was just finding huge success with his new movies Bloodsport, Kickboxer, and Universal Soldier. When that idea eventually fell through, they decided to keep the fighting game idea, but to add a fantasy element to it instead. They even paid homage to John claude Van Damme by having an over-the-top movie star with the same initials as the actor in the form of Johnny Cage. When the idea was pitched to Midway Games, Midway was initially against the idea. But after getting dollar signs in their eyes from seeing the success of Capcom's Street Fighter II World Warrior, they finally greenlit the title to appear as an arcade cabinet fighting game. In an effort to differentiate themselves from their Capcom competitors, Midway set out to do a few things very intentionally different. Instead of using hand-drawn characters, they went with digitized sprites of real people. Instead of honorable combat, they decided to opt for intense blood and violence. And instead of a name that invoked thoughts of brawls on the street, they went with something a bit more hardcore. And thus, Mortal Kombat was born. Mortal Kombat soon became the biggest competitor to the widely popular Street Fighter. The creators of the games even compared the rivalry to that of Coke and Pepsi. Ed Boon and the team behind the game decided that they wanted other ways to make the game feel special, so they added a deep, if confusing, story to the game. The fighters weren't just sprites battling it out in an alleyway, but they were an assassin on a mission battling a person who was trying to avenge their family atop a three foot wide bridge over a pit of death. The developers also introduced a first for video games by including a variety of hidden content within the game. Mortal Kombat was the first game ever to feature secret unlockable fighters, a feature which we've seen included in many games to follow. The game also went about fan service in a way that was different than most fighting games. The developers hid a ton of secrets within the game, like ways to access entirely new parts that were so obscure that it took years and years after the game's release for people to discover, or the team behind the game listening to fan theories about false hidden characters, and then eventually actually adding those characters to the game, like Scarlet. They also wanted to have as much content as possible for their fans, besides just their main fighting mode. Over the years, we've seen competitive puzzle solving, kart racing, and even a fully fleshed out action RPG within the game to get to know the characters better. When it comes to pleasing their fans, the people behind Mortal Kombat are some of the best that I've ever seen. This is one of the many things that's led to their success. The success of the series is one of the main things working in favor of a Mortal Kombat rep. The entire franchise has sold around 60 million copies, putting it just barely below the Super Smash Bros. franchise as one of the best-selling series of all time. Even despite being banned in several countries like Germany for decades, the game has managed to beat out a ton of other franchises out there in terms of sales and popularity. There is absolutely no denying the success of the series. One of the reasons that it got so popular despite this reputation was that to a lot of people, the game wasn't just about blood and gore. It's about the fun times that they had staying up with their friends, beating each other late into the night. But it's also about following the stories of these interesting characters, including Sub-Zero, Raiden, Johnny Cage, or the one that we're going to focus on today, Scorpion. Now, despite being focused on Scorpion specifically, these arguments are actually going to apply to just about any Mortal Kombat character out there. Scorpion is the ninja anti-hero whose family was murdered. He was killed in pursuit of vengeance, but ended up bringing himself back from hell to get his revenge. He's one of the many different colored ninjas in the Mortal Kombat series, with a super cool design, an awesome moveset, and the ability to rip his face off and breathe fire out of a skeleton head. There is no wonder why people love this character. 
An argument that people want to make in favor of Scorpion over other characters from the game is the fact that he seems to be becoming more and more of a mascot for the series as years go on, and so he's generally thought of as the face of modern Mortal Kombat. And yeah, that makes sense to me. If they were going to put in any character from the series, Scorpion seems like a very safe pick. Mortal Kombat is no stranger to crossovers either. They've been allowing guest fighters for the last few years and have allowed their characters to appear in Injustice 2. And speaking of Injustice, one of the most common arguments I hear is the fact that Mortal Kombat would be too violent to allow in Smash. And I think that there are a few different angles to take this from. First off, we've seen that Nintendo isn't afraid of representing M-rated characters within Smash. We can see this with their inclusion of Bayonetta, Snake, Isabelle, and if you count me costumes, then also Travis Touchdown. With Smash, I don't think that the rating itself is an issue, because the rating system for video games is really, really bad and doesn't make a lot of sense. Uncharted 4 and Super Smash Bros. Brawl were given the same T rating, whereas Persona 5, Red Dead Redemption, New Horizons, and Mortal Kombat were all given the exact same rating, despite having a huge disparity in the appropriateness of their content. I think what the team behind Smash likely cares about more is the content of the games themselves. It's really tempting to try to claim that they don't care about the appropriateness of their content at all, by evidence of the fighters that I just mentioned, but it would be a disservice to pretend that Smash doesn't give any thought to censorship. We can see examples of Smash censorship by Nintendo, with things like removing the feather from Mr. Game & Watch that offended a lot of different people for some reason, or covering up Camilla and her spirit and doing the same for Mithra plus adding tights, cropping Tharja's spirit to cut off her legs, or re-stitching Palutena's skirt. As Sakurai himself claims, Smash Bros is a game for good boys and girls of all ages, and because of that we need to ask whether or not Mortal Kombat can be faithfully represented in Smash Bros given its violent nature. Well, for starters, we have seen Scorpion implemented in his games without using insane amounts of violence and gore, especially in his DC crossovers. We've had Mortal Kombat vs. DC, where the violence was toned down a notch, Scorpion's appearance in Injustice, where the gore was absent, and also a Mortal Kombat appearance on the Super Nintendo, where the blood was replaced with sweat and the gore was disabled. We know that the team behind Mortal Kombat is willing to compromise on the gore, and we know that even without it, Scorpion looks incredible. Like, I can't emphasize enough how cool this guy is in Injustice. And we know that Warner Brothers, the parent company of Mortal Kombat these days, is no stranger to working with Nintendo. We've seen Mortal Kombat 11 on the Switch, as well as some other games on the Switch, like the Lego franchise, which also comes from Warner Brothers. We also have a statement from Ed Boon saying that for him personally, seeing Scorpion or Sub-Zero in Smash would be like, quote, seeing a stamp of approval saying that we're in the gang, end quote. Now, Ed Boon made it very clear that he was just speaking for himself personally, but people really read into this and tend to take it one of two ways. Either Ed Boon said he really wants Mortal Kombat and Smash, so obviously it will happen, or else Ed Boon said that he wanted Mortal Kombat and Smash and thereby broke NDA. If I've learned anything from my Sora video, it's that non-disclosure agreements are a huge headache for speculation, because they serve as a canvas for anyone to paint any sort of argument that they want on it convincingly. Breach of NDA can range in consequences, anywhere from saying, don't do that again, to huge fines. But these statements from Ed Boon are different than the statements surrounding Sora or Master Chief to me. A non-disclosure agreement doesn't typically state that you're unable to give a personal opinion on the subject, just simply that you can't disclose any confidential information. They aren't typically typically in order to shut up in general, but rather just to close off from talking about secret info. To me, Ed Boon answered this question in the safest possible way, where even if Scorpion was being added to Smash, it likely still wouldn't be a breach of any sort of NDA. It's simply Ed saying that he likes the idea and thinks it would be cool. That said, knowing how Ed Boon works, I think that I could totally see him adding Scorpion to Smash, but working with the Smash team to have a Sub-Zero Echo unlocked in a super obscure, hard to discover way that the Smash audience would have no idea about for years. But that's just me running my mouth and something that I think would be cool. In general, I think that these statements from Ed Boon have little to no impact on Scorpion's chances, other than maybe potentially working in his favor a little bit. I think what it boils down to is whether or not Nintendo would actually want to add Scorpion to Smash. We do know that they have a history of adding popular fighting game characters like Ryu, Ken, and Terry, so maybe it wouldn't be out of the question to add another in the form of Scorpion. And if they were going completely off of sales, Mortal Kombat recently passed up Tekken, making it the next biggest fighting game to add. In fact, Mortal Kombat has even outsold Street Fighter and nearly Smash Bros itself, so there's no denying that its sales are impressive and the precedent of adding fighting games 
same characters as there. But it's also important to know that Mortal Kombat 11 is banned in Japan. This is complicated to say the least. Here's what I've gathered about the Mortal Kombat bans in Japan, because there aren't a lot of good resources to read up on this. Not every entry in the series has been banned, and some have even been very popular in Japan. Even with Mortal Kombat 11, only certain platforms of the game were banned, and even then it's based on region. We can speculate that it's banned due to violence, which I think is a fair assumption, but we also see games like Doom Eternal in Japan not being censored, so it's unclear at where this censorship bar is. It also seems like Japan might not have a problem allowing Mortal Kombat if it was properly censored, according to the article that I just mentioned. In summary, Mortal Kombat is banned in Japan except for where it isn't, and even when it is banned, it isn't everywhere except for when it is, and when it is banned, it's only banned in certain forms except for when it's not. And even if the series is banned, only 10% of it is banned, and even that 10% is only theoretically banned in certain parts of Japan, and those parts are only on certain platforms unless they're censored, in which case no one really knows. So yeah, that's confusing. The ban and censorship argument is a mess that has a lot of speculation around it that we don't really know much about. That said, we do know that Nintendo cares about its public perception, and this might turn them off to the idea a bit. It's hard to really say. In the end, these are my thoughts on the matter. Scorpion and Smash isn't as out of the question as it may initially sound. We've seen the Mortal Kombat team work with companies who felt uncomfortable with violence or gore before, and we've seen the Smash team work with mature content before, just never quite to this extent. I think that the game's stigma of violence and gore overshadows its interesting characters and lore when it comes to public perception, which I think is probably going to matter to Nintendo in some capacity. I think that ultimately this is going to be the biggest factor working against Scorpion. We do know that Smash has liked putting popular fighting game characters in the game before now, and so Scorpion would seem like a natural pick to follow that pattern, and he may be one of the single coolest characters that they could add. With all of these factors, I think that I would rate his chances around a 4 out of 10. Do you agree with me? Put your ratings in the comment below and try to change my mind. This was part 1 of my 3 part Halloween special. Next up, I'm talking about Freddy Fazbear, so make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss that one. I have a post over on my community tab talking about my Halloween special. If it gets up to 100 likes, I'm going to cover Skull Kid this week as well. Hit subscribe if you want to see when I post, or hit the bell if you actually want to see when I post. Stay smashing.